Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with Down to Earth Astronomy. We're continuing to build the SRV in Kerbal and last time uh, we managed to get a box on the back and some wheels on the side. Today's focus will be mainly on the thrusters so we can get this thing up in the air and if we have time for it uh, I think we should try to put on a turret at the top. But let's start with the thrusters here. I've been looking into the action groups because I was actually considering making these thrusters rotate we have these small rotation servers, and you can actually get those in, in quite small variants, as you can see here. Put that there. That's not very big. We can easily hide that and then make them actually rotate, because the way I understand it is we can, we can rotate. You can see these can rotate around. So I think something like, like that should do it. Maybe we'll move those up a bit so they kind of looks like they're more part of the uh, part of the construction like so for the thrusters i think we're gonna go with jet engines because jets are small although you can get fairly small i think and and they often last a lot longer on the fuel so we could easily build like just and we have some fuel remember in uh, in the main uh, hold in here we have a big fuel tank so we do have plenty of, of fuel available so we just need an air intake and an engine so to start by see what kind of engines we have available. Okay, so the natural air intake would be the small circular intakes here. But you can see if I take that and I begin to compress this in to hide it like so, they look a little uh, like they're a little fat. <laughs> so I think what we'll have to do is actually make these slightly longer. You know what? At a distance, it's maybe not too bad to be honest. One thing I want to do though is actually hide these a little bit more so I move them inwards like so okay seems like these are not what I was thought they were these are more like they like servers that move to a specific angle maybe it's the maybe these are what I'm looking for okay other motors take two I guess let's see what happens here so Break. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, these are, of course, these engines here. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay, so the problem is, of course, these count as actual engines, and that means if we have, they have to be spinning at the, uh, no, yeah, no. That, I just want to see if these even have remotely enough thrust. So thrust is still building. We're up to 15 kilonewtons. I don't think these are gonna take off. Okay, back to the drawing board. We are gonna do a small test here now. What we're gonna do is we are going to, and this is gonna look a little silly, but bear with me. Uh, we're just gonna take like these tanks here. Way too big, I know, but again, bear with me for a second. Put up some rocket engines here on the side and the idea is i want to be able to see the thrust output for when this thing begins to take off so 5 8 13 we are up in the area we were before 18 20 kilonewtons 30 and this is of course by from two engines 50 kilonewtons 60 70 we're beginning to get some movement here i can see the spring beginning to decompress at 72 and at around 80 we have liftoff and the destroyed engines two destroyed engines even okay so now we can just quite simply take these sort them by size and then look at the thrust at sea level the asl thrust and then just go through them and see when we hit something that can actually output in the vicinity of 80 kilonewtons of thrust. Okay, the first that I encounter is these aerospike engines. That could be interesting. Um, they can produce at sea level around 150 uh, thrust. And then, of course, we have the rapier engine. And if these are in air breathing mode, and we need to look at the stationary thrusts, because these are, of course, 
I think they, they utilize a lot of, of air, they need a lot of air intakes, so they need to be moving in order to actually work. <laughs> Way too big. Oh, okay, house of thrust, house of center of mass. We're not quite shooting through the center of mass right now, but that means we'll see if, if these engines, these they can actually, we have four out here in the front, so there's a chance that they can compensate for the torque. Okay, let's put RCS and SAS on. Let's see how we're doing for thrust here. Okay, I, so I, I messed everything up right now just to try and run some fuel pipes directly out to those engines out there. Yeah, so now that one is actually spinning up. Okay. And of course it's now spinning out of control because I only have one engine running. And we're up to the 80 kilos of the thrust, but we only have one engine. Okay. And that's going to be an issue. Okay. So it seems after some experimentation that I just need to connect the engines to the main body to get them to work. So SAS on, RCS on, thrust is to max. This should take some time to, to wind up. Let's just get, keep an eye on all our resources here. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Aww. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Okay, here's a crazy idea. What if we got rid of this tank? I'm looking at these engines here. Model propeller and fuel engines. These give about 10 kilonewtons at sea level. Um, of thrust, which is okay, I think. And if we just use those and we kind of like, we cheat a little bit, right? So, so here's what I have in mind. We've just put some engines out here. The ones we started with originally, um, where are they? Like these basic jet engines, because they kind of fit okay in size and we could make it look somewhat close to what it is in game. These are just there for aesthetics and they're not going to provide any significant amount of thrust. We're going to set the thrust limit really, really low on them. So they don't really do anything. What we did in reality do is we all around the perimeter of the craft we put these. So this is like 20 kilonewtons and like so. That's barely noticeable. We just have the exhaust pointing out here towards the bottom. And how is, does this look? We are obviously a little rear heavy, but we can potentially hide a few more of these, I think. Uh, could I actually, are they small enough that I can hide those up here in the front? That's probably going to be difficult. Okay, let's see if this would work at all. There's a little bit of clipping there I need to fix, but that's easy to do. I'll do that later. Well, they're working, but it seems like I do not have enough. Okay, here we go. Take two. Let's get these things online. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it takes off now, that's for sure. Now we just need to make this. I want to see this take off and land on its wheel again. Uh, okay, I think I found this is like becoming an exercise in hiding engines in this thing. <laughs> Um, I think I found a place to hide these things again. If I put them here, and I put, let's say, two sets on, so four in total, there. So they can go by right there. So we have like two, like what just basically looks like structures that are going to hold up the seat while we have the engines there. And look at that. That is almost, almost perfectly through the center of mass. And of course, the closer our thrust vector is through the center of mass, the less work our RCS thrusters have to do to keep this thing from flipping over. We just have to be a little careful with our thrust so we don't completely overpower our RCS. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oh, goes off to the side. Why is RCS not taking over? Maybe because we have to be moving a bit. Oh. 
Okay, I made a small change. Uh, the car makes it seem from the outside, but the see makes any difference out here. Look at that! Look at that thing hover! <laughs> and then slowly put it down again. <laughs> yes! Oh god! Okay, let's get this thing rolling. Down the runway. And there we go. It doesn't fly for long, but it flies. <laughs> All I really did was, if I open this up, you'll now see, you can't even see them actually. You can just see them clip through here a little bit. I just hide like three stacks of reaction wheels uh, inside. If anything is like, you're trying to fly anything unwieldy and you can't make it stable, just put enough reaction wheels in it and eventually it will fly. And eventually we run out of fuel. And things will begin to explode. Okay, so there's a little bit of the engine that used to be just the height out here in the front. But other than that, that was really perfect. Okay, here we are. Now with the engines on the side. Obviously they're there for, for just being aesthetics. But <laughs> let's give this a go. Let's drive the things down the highway <laughs> or the runway. Let's fire these things up. Not too high. Let's get it down. No. And down, touch down. No, oh, that thing's explode. <laughs> yeah, that's that seems very accurate. That seems quite true to the real thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. We can't get to the top, and we can also get over. Oh, this is not gonna end well. Oh, okay. Wow, that went way better than I expected. I think that was a quite successful little build. I'm at least very, very happy with it. I think this came out wonderful. And the fact we managed to get it to fly, not as I have anticipated, this is a little cheating. But I'm really happy, especially that I managed to get this thing to fly relatively stable. Anyway, I hope you like this little series. Um, we didn't manage to get a turret on it. I'm not sure if we're going to do a video just for that. But at least I hope you like this series. If you want to see more really dangerous stuff being built in Kerbal, do let me know in the comment section what you would like to see. Thanks a lot for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.